the green children of Woolpit, where does the story begin? The fields of Suffolk, England have borne witness to centuries of history. From the disciplined march of Roman legions to the humble toil of medieval farmers, the land holds countless tales. Each era has left its mark, a layer of history waiting to be uncovered. But few stories are as strange, as enduring, as the tale of the green children of Woolpit. This legend has puzzled historians and storytellers alike for generations. Imagine a summer day in the 12th century. Harvest time approaches and the village of Woolpit bustles with activity. Farmers work tirelessly, preparing for the crucial season ahead. Suddenly, at the edge of the village, by the pits used to trap wolves, something impossible appears. The villagers, accustomed to the ordinary, are about to witness the extraordinary. Two children, a brother and sister, emerge from the woods. Their appearance is unlike anything the villagers have ever seen. Their clothes are strange, their speech unintelligible. The villagers struggle to understand them, their language a mystery. But most shocking of all is their skin, a vibrant, unnatural green. This peculiar hue sets them apart, making them seem almost otherworldly. The villagers gather a mixture of fear and curiosity gripping their hearts. Whispers spread quickly, each person speculating about the origins of these strange children. Who are these children and from where have they come? The questions hang in the air, unanswered and unsettling. The children, bewildered and frightened, offered little help in unravelling their origins. They spoke in a language unknown to the villagers further deepening the mystery surrounding them. Their eyes darted around, taking in the unfamiliar surroundings with a mix of fear and curiosity. The boy, slightly older, and the girl, younger and more timid, clung to each other. They seemed inseparable, finding comfort only in each other's presence amidst the strange new world they had found themselves in. Their clothing, unfamiliar in style and fabric, hinted at a world unknown to the villagers. The material was unlike anything the villagers had seen, and the intricate designs suggested a culture far removed from their own. Food, when offered, was met with refusal. The children turned away from the bread and meat, their faces showing signs of distress and confusion. It was clear that the food was foreign to them, and they had no desire to consume it. The children seemed to waste away, their green pallor growing more pronounced. Their skin, tinged with an unusual green hue, made them appear even more otherworldly to the villagers who watched with growing concern. Days turned into weeks, and still the children refused all nourishment. Then, a breakthrough. The villagers were at a loss, unsure how to help the children who seemed to be fading away before their eyes. A villager arrived with a basket of freshly picked beans. The sight of the beans sparked a glimmer of hope among the villagers who had been desperately searching for a way to sustain the children. The children, their eyes widening in recognition, eagerly devoured the raw legumes. It was the first time they had shown any interest in food, and the villagers watched in amazement as the children ate with gusto. Beans became their sustenance, a strange link to their unknown past. The villagers were relieved to see the children finally eating, but the mystery of their origins remained unsolved. The beans, however, provided a crucial connection to the world the children had come from, offering a small glimpse into their enigmatic past. Theories abound regarding the origins of the green children. Some, captivated by the otherworldly nature of their appearance, point to extraterrestrial origins. Could these children, with their unusual skin tone and unfamiliar language, be visitors from another planet? The idea, while fantastical, holds a certain allure, especially in our modern age of science fiction and space exploration. Others, drawing upon local folklore and legends, whisper of fairy folk and subterranean realms. Perhaps, they speculate, the children wandered through some hidden portal, emerging into our world from a magical dimension. The green hue of their skin in this light becomes a mark of their otherworldly origins. Additionally, it is important to mention that there is another layer of meaning that can be attributed to this, which is the symbolic interpretation. When considering the children's description of St. Martin's Land as a place akin to the underworld, it becomes apparent that the green color they attribute to it can symbolize not only life, but also death. 
As their green hue gradually fades away and they adapt to their new life above ground, it is possible that this transformation symbolizes a revival or transition from the state of death to the state of life. More grounded theories focus on earthly explanations. Could the children, lost and disoriented, have wandered from a distant land? Their unusual green complexion might be attributed to a dietary deficiency, perhaps a condition like chlorosis, which can cause a greenish tinge to the skin. Their unfamiliarity with the local language and customs could be the result of cultural isolation. One compelling possibility points to the nearby Fens, a vast and treacherous marshland. Perhaps the children, separated from their family, became lost in the Fens, surviving on a diet of whatever they could scavenge, including plants with a high chlorophyll content, which might explain their green colouring. During the reign of King Stephen in the 12th century, the tale passed down through generations and found its way into written history thanks to two chroniclers, Ralph of Coggeshall and William of Newburgh. These men, living in the late 12th and early 13th centuries, documented the events in their respective chronicles, preserving the tale for posterity. Ralph of Coggeshall, a monk at the nearby Coggeshall Abbey, heard the story firsthand from Sir Richard de Calm, who took the children in. William of Newburgh, a historian known for his critical approach, included the story in his History of English Affairs, albeit with some scepticism. Ralph of Coggeshall's account, written in his Chronicles of Coggeshall, provides a detailed description of the children. He describes their green skin, their strange language, and their initial refusal to eat anything but raw beans. He notes their eventual adaptation to local food and customs and the gradual fading of their green complexion. Ralph's account, while sympathetic to the children's plight, offers no definitive explanation for their origins. He presents the story as a curious occurrence, leaving the reader to draw their own conclusions. William of Newburgh, in his History of English Affairs, takes a more sceptical approach. While acknowledging the strangeness of the tale, he expresses doubts about the children's claim of emerging from an underground realm. He suggests that their story might be a fabrication or a misinterpretation of events. Despite his scepticism, William includes the story in his chronicle, recognizing its enduring appeal. He concludes that the matter remains a mystery, leaving the reader to ponder the possibilities. The green children's inability to communicate with the villagers presented a significant obstacle. Their language, unlike any known tongue, remained a barrier to understanding their origins. As they slowly learned English, they revealed snippets of their past, speaking of a land bathed in perpetual twilight where the sun never shone. Whether these fragmented memories were real or the product of trauma and disorientation remains uncertain. The children's account, filtered through the lens of their limited English, provided more questions than answers. As the children acclimated to their new life, a curious transformation occurred. The green hue of their skin gradually faded, replaced by a more natural complexion. Some speculated that the sunlight, previously unknown to them, triggered this change. Others attributed it to a change in diet. The boy, however, did not fully adapt. He grew ill and died, leaving his sister to navigate this unfamiliar world alone. The girl, now fully integrated into village life, eventually married and, according to some accounts, bore children of her own, their skin a normal, healthy hue. The story of the green children of Woolpit, despite its age and the passage of time, continues to capture the imagination. Was it a hoax? or a tale spun from the threads of folklore and superstition prevalent in medieval times, a case of mistaken identity. Could these children have been orphans, lost and confused, their strange appearance simply a result of malnutrition or illness, or a genuine glimpse into the unknown? Some suggest they might have come from a hidden world, a parallel dimension that occasionally intersects with our own. I want to hear your theories, so please let me know in the comments. Was it a malfunction deficiency? They were just lost? Or they came from a magical place elsewhere? Theories abound, 
each offering a different perspective on this enduring enigma. Scholars have pored over ancient manuscripts and debated the plausibility of each scenario, and yet no consensus has been reached. Perhaps the most likely explanation lies in a combination of factors, lost children, disoriented and suffering from a dietary deficiency, their story embellished over time, transforming into the legend we know today. The green hue of their skin, possibly a result of chlorosis, a condition caused by a lack of iron, added to the mystery. Whatever the truth, the green children of Woolpit remind us that some mysteries may never be fully solved.